Whether you're a small startup or a big company, a logo can help you to build your brand identity to your audience. And a logo animation can be a great way to tell your brand story. But while animating a logo, there are a few things that you have to ensure. For example, it should be short, relatable, easy to recognize, and it should tell your audience what you are about. But the most important point is, does your logo animation stands with the core identity of your brand or not? So there should be a proper initial thought process involved rather than directly jump onto After Effects and starting to animate the logo. Now I know what you're thinking that there must be a step-by-step -step procedure for a logo animation. Don't worry, in this video I'm going to share with you my entire logo animation workflow for this logo animation for a french fries cafe that I've recently created. So we start off a project with a concept. So I started by brainstorming ideas for the animation. I wanted to show the cooking process for the fries, so I made a word tree to help me brainstorm different ways to approach the animation. From there, I picked some keywords and searched it up on Google for inspiration. The clip begins with a single potato happily jumping from a line. As it comes back to the ground, a snappy sharp knife appears and slices the potato into perfect pieces. The pieces are then flung into the air, spinning and trolling as they fall towards a waiting fryer. As they sizzle and cook to golden perfection, the pieces then jumps back out of the fryer and lands on the wrapper, ready to be served. Now it's time to bring our design to life. Using Adobe Illustrator, I meticulously crafted the perfect logo for our french fries cafe. Every curve and line was carefully considered to create a polished and a professional result. Next up was the storyboarding process. I wanted to make sure this animation told a cohesive and an engaging story. So I put together a visual outline of sequence of events. This helped me map out exactly how I wanted to present each of the elements on the scene. When it comes to choosing colors, I turned to Adobe Color for inspiration and guidance. After some trial and error, I was able to settle on a custom color palette that perfectly captures the spirit of this cafe. And now it's time for the final production phase. After completing the design and planning phase, it's time to bring our logo animation to life using After Effects. The animation was purely based on the timing between each of the transition between frames. So my initial approach was to first animate the knife and get the motion and the timing just right. And from there, I added more elements and animation based on the timing that was established by the knife. So for the potato slicing animation, I added individual pieces of the potato in different layers. I trimmed the potato layers after each of the knife strikes, creating the illusion that the knife is cutting through the potato. Once the knife strikes the potato, I animated the potato pieces spreading out by adjusting the position and the rotation properties of the layer. Now we are going to check out some of the essential tricks in After Effects. So first, we're going to learn how to add the snappy movement. So here is the knife and we're going to start with animating the position and the rotation. Let's jump on to next nine frame and select the layer and I'm going to place it over here. Now let's rotate the layer. Let's select the keyframes and reverse the keyframe order. And here I'm going to rotate it in the opposite side. And here I'm going to strike on the crown. So let's reposition it and let's rotate it to properly align with the line. Now select the keyframes easy is it. Now we're going to change the motion graph editor of the Y position. So make this side stiff, this one also stiff and this one I would change it to the auto bezier keyframe and we are going to pull the bezier handles out to give a hard edge like this. With this hard edge you can also see a little snappy movement if over here but it is not that snappy it is still smooth so we are going to add some improvement later on. Now let's change the motion graph editor of this rotation property. So for the rotation we are going to change it to the auto basic keyframe and here we're going to make the stiff and here we can pull the basic handles to add some ease and here we can add some ease as well and then for the position property here 
let's jump on to the motion graph editor once again and we are going to add one keyframe over here so for that press the control key and hold it and here you can click on it to add the keyframe so let's select the keyframe and drag it few frames before and now we're going to modify the motion graph a little bit so let's make this graph a bit smooth so we are going to move it down and make this stiff also make this side stiff as well all right same we are going to do for this side of the position animation so let's jump onto the motion graph editor again and here we are going to add a keyframe and drag it over here and we have to make sure the motion graph is smooth at this part there is no discontinuity in between the keyframes now let's check out the animation here you can see that snappy movement over here now you can even make this animation snappier by changing the timing depending on the feel of animation you were trying to achieve. Now we are going to learn how to add 2D motion blur in After Effects. So select the knife animation and over here in the effects and presets panel type in echo and we are going to apply this effect. Now we are going to turn on the continuous rasterize first. So turn it on if it's an illustration layer. After that we are going to change it to maximum and then we're going to change the timing so give it around 0 5 or let's change it to 0 6 so now if we increase the number of echoes you can see we can expand it by distorting the layer now we're going to use this number itself so right now we're going to give it 0 let's put a keyframe over here and we're going to expand it exactly where there is the maximum speed so right now in this motion the maximum speed is when it is getting up so till this point we can keep that echo animation so here I'm going to increase it to around 60 and then when it's striking we can even add a little echo over here as well so here we can add around 55 and here we can add 0. Now let's select the keyframes easy as it. Now let's check out the animation. Now if we are getting this kind of an effect, that's because it's stopping over here. So we have to make sure to stop the echo animation when the animation is stopping. Now it's looking perfect. Then I used a match cut to transform the knife into a frying pan. To make the transition smooth, I added some shape path animation in the previous frame and the next frame. Next, I used another match cut to transform the frying pan into a bucket. As with the previous match cut, we added a shape path animation to make the transition seamless. For the text animation, I animated the position, rotation and the scale property of each of the letters. Then I added a background circle layer and used it as a track mat to archive the desired effect. To add some follow through on the ribbon, I added some puppet pins and converted the pins into bone layers with the help of Twig Bezier plugin. Then I added some rotation keyframes to give the ribbon more realistic and dynamic movement. So that is it for this video. Thank you for watching this lower animation breakdown process. I hope you enjoyed following along with me and learned something out of it. So if you like the video, make sure to hit the like button. If you have any doubt regarding the techniques, then make sure to comment down below. I'd be happy to help you out. And if you're here for the first time, make sure to subscribe the channel and hit the bell notification button to stay notified for all future updates. Until then, goodbye.